Hello everyone and welcome into GCTV. My name is Alyssa Lang, joined by Chris Clark. The Gamecocks have just come out victorious over arch in-state rival Clemson and we're going to break down that game for you. Starting with some key players for the Gamecocks, Chris, who really stood out to you as far as someone who made this victory possible for the Gamecocks? We thought going in Mike Davis would have a big game, but Clemson really schemed against him, did a good job. He had just 25 yards on 15 carries, so that meant it was going to be on other players' shoulders. Connor Shaw in his final home game uh, at williams Bryce Stadium, he was the standout. Um, I think he was the biggest reason that South Carolina was able to have success on offense, made some key throws, some big scrambles um, out of the pocket, some big design quarterback runs, some draws. Another player on offense was Farrah Cooper, freshman. They lined him up at quarterback some. He had a big pass to Brandon Wilds for a touchdown on a design sort of play action play. Uh, also threw a deep pass to Shaq Rowland where he drew a pass interference penalty. So those were a couple of big players. You know, defensively, I thought Kelsey Quarles had a great game. And really, South Carolina's in entire secondary and linebackers played really well in pass coverage. Now, this was a game that we kind of looked at and said, oh, hey, Jadavian Clowney still plays for the Gamecocks. What were your overall impressions of him? I thought he was active, had a good game. Clemson, of course, devoted a lot of attention to him. Uh, Brandon Thomas, Clemson's left tackle, was their best offensive lineman. I thought he won some battles against Clowney. Uh, they also moved a fullback uh, slash tight end back there to double team him sometimes. Uh, one of the sacks that Clowney uh, had in the game, uh, he just basically Taj Boyd ran into him. Uh, Thomas had pretty good coverage on him. But uh, Clowney did have a good game. I thought he was active and always draws that attention from the offense. Now, watching this game, the Gamecocks did look dominant over Clemson. Clemson having six turnovers. But what were some things that they did that really just threw this one away? Uh, yeah, six turnovers for Clemson. That's going to do it. It's, it's really remarkable that they were in the game late you know, third and fourth quarter. This was a game that was tied at 17 for quite a while until South Carolina pulled away with a couple late scores. And to have six turnovers and then your opponent have none uh, is sort of a borderline miracle to even be in the game. But uh, I was surprised Clemson didn't run the ball more. I guess when they got down uh, late in the game finally, they had to pass it a little bit more. Taj Boyd had a couple late picks. That certainly hurt them. Uh, but having the special teams miscues, not running the ball, even though they had success running it with the running back, I think those were a couple things that hurt them. And then South Carolina was good on third down offensively. Clemson couldn't get off the field a few times, and they couldn't stop Connor Shaw. Now, as far as the rivalry goes, South Carolina will have won its fifth straight game against Clemson, first time in school history. What does that do for the program? And obviously, the Gamecocks have bragging rights for the next year. What, what is that like now to have five in a row? It's a feeling that Gamecock fans hadn't experienced in a while, obviously, or ever, as you said. Um, and it gives the program, I think, a lot of confidence. This is a game where they feel like they can go out there and win every year. It's a lot different than in the past before they started the streak. South Carolina has upgraded their talent level in the past several years. And when they go out on the field, they really believe that they can win. And they've just made more plays uh, over the course of the five-game streak than Clemson has. Uh, so. We'll see what happens in the future, but certainly it's big for the program. Now, the Gamecocks will have one more game left this season. We're not sure what it is yet because the Bulls haven't been announced. But going forward, you know, they'll have a while to prepare for whatever bowl game it is. What are you looking for them to keep working on in this kind of break that they have until, bowl, until the bowl game? Yeah, there's still some things to work on. Luckily for South Carolina, they're very healthy at this time of year. Chaz Elder suffered a concussion in the Clemson game, but Coach Spurrier said he should be okay. Uh, so he'll be back. Uh, Mike Davis was banged up going into the game, but he had a chance to rest during the coastal week going into Clemson. He'll be fine. So health-wise, health this team's okay. Uh, they're just going to have to continue tuning things up, try to get to 11 wins again, just polish up offense, defense. And the special teams unit played well last week too, so that's an area I'm sure they'll continue working on too. Other than that, just wait out, see what happens, Auburn, Missouri, all the other games that are going to – you know, lead up to bowl season. And we will, of course, keep you updated on what bowl game the Gamecocks do get. But for now, that will do it for this episode of GCTV. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out GamecockCentral.com for all your Gamecock athletic needs, and we will see you next time.